Hello, and welcome to the online worship services for Island Creek United Methodist Church, Mount Point United Methodist Church, and Fancy Gap United Methodist Church. If you would, please join me in a word of prayer. Lord Almighty God, we thank you for this day, for this day and this joyful season of Easter. As we continue through this season, I pray that we seek out the words of your scriptures and the wisdom they hold. And I pray that we take from them a lesson that helps us be better people, be better Christians, and be better followers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 22 through 32. Fellow Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having released him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As children, we look forward to Christmas morning what presents will we get? Will our grandparents be coming? Maybe, just maybe, we will get that toy that we have been waiting for for months. Christmas morning comes, and if we are lucky, we got those toys that we were hoping for. The day goes on and we play with those toys all day. Weeks go by and the toys get laid aside. Then years go by and those toys may still be with us, but chances are they will have been donated to someone else or even thrown away. There is an excitement about getting something new, but time goes on and we don't get excited about it like we once did. Time goes on, and we might even find ourselves forgetting that we even wanted it once upon a time. Easter has come. The resurrection has passed. We are now here a week later. The excitement and the joy of that morning has faded. 
And now, the real work for the disciples and for us begins. After the resurrection of Jesus and after his ascension, which we will be reminded of in a few short weeks, the disciples set about the next task that they were given. This task, as many of us remember, is to go and tell the story. Tell the story of Jesus and of his resurrection. This task was to be carried out among both the Jew and the Gentile. In this moment of scripture that I have just read, Peter is speaking to a crowd and addressing them, saying, Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem. I mentioned last Sunday that a decision needed to be made about who to believe when it came to the event of the resurrection. The task of telling the story and persuading the people fell upon the disciples. The disciples were in the position of telling the story of Christ to people who were Jewish, those who knew the law and knew the prophecies of the past, and to those who were Gentiles, those who were not a part of the original covenant with God, but through Christ, were invited to seek salvation. In this moment in Acts, Peter is speaking very much to the Jewish audience. He had previously quoted the book of Joel, and now he is quoting passages of Psalms that were attributed to King David. In doing so, Peter is clearly trying to persuade them that Jesus was who he said he was. He was not a usurper. He was not a fraud. He was a descendant of David and was the one who David had foretold was coming. David, to the people, was one of the greatest leaders and prophets ever sent to them by God. But even he wasn't the Messiah. He wasn't the Savior. Peter, in this moment, even reminds them that David had died, was buried, and to that very day he was still in his grave. You might wonder why I am going into all this detail. I am doing so to remind you just how hard of a task their mission was. The twelve were to go to all the people of the world, the Jew and the Gentile. They had to know the writings of the scriptures. They had to know how to be persuasive. They had to know how to speak and how to teach. But above all, they had to have faith. And they had to have courage. For their task would be a difficult one. Not long after Peter's sermon, himself and John are arrested. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came to them, much annoyed because they were teaching at the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered about 5,000. Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. After their arrest, they are confronted by the chief priest in the temple, and they are ordered to stop spreading the story of Jesus. 
their response? Hmm. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. The apostles would continue in their boldness. They would continue in their teachings. The proof of this is not only in our scriptures, but in the fact that we today know the story of Jesus. But they did not continue to tell the story with their own strength. In this same chapter of Acts, the believers of the time Reach out to God in prayer. That prayer says, in part, For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness. While you stretch out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. The people knew the threats they were facing. They knew that by spreading the story, they risked not only imprisonment, but death, too. They asked for courage and boldness, and they were granted it. But then the scriptures, we do not know what ultimately happened to the twelve. But by tradition, all but one of them died a horrible, painful death. Murdered, crucified, stoned to death. These are only a few of their fates. This is also the fate of other early believers men and women both they literally died to tell the story of the resurrection at the beginning of this sermon i mentioned the excitement about christmas morning of receiving a new toy but after having it for a period of time you set it aside and don't find it important anymore. I ask of you a question. Why have we treated the death and resurrection like a forgotten toy? Hmm? Think back, if you will, on the moment that you first accepted Christ into your heart. What was the first thing you wanted to do? Did you want to share that joy with others? Did you want to tell someone else what you had discovered? I know that I did. Where is that excitement today? Where is that joy? Why is it that we take today for granted? Why do we take this gift that we have received for granted? Why do we take the story for granted? Why is it that we do not take the time to listen to the story or read the story that people for centuries have died for. Even today, there are those in our world who risk their lives 
even to have just a few scraps of scripture in their possession. The title of this sermon today is The Work Begins. I'm not only talking about the work of the disciples. I'm not only talking about the work of the early believers in Christ. I am talking about us today. Our work is not to just sit in our churches every Sunday. Our work is not to just read our scriptures. Our work is more than that. Our work is to tell this story to our neighbors. Our work is to love our neighbors. Our work is to spread the gospel. I know that that work can be scary. I know that that work can be hard. But others are dying to tell this story. So why do we, in our world, cast the story aside like an old forgotten toy? The greatest story of all time? And we don't treasure it enough. If you'll join me in prayer. Lord Almighty God, we pray that we come to appreciate and understand and cherish the stories in our scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, all of it. Stories of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, their descendants. The stories of Christ. The stories of the early believers. These words are to be cherished. Give us the courage, the strength, and the boldness to be your people and to love your story above all else. Well, you're, of course, above your story. And let us always draw closer to you. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen.